What is up everyone and welcome back once again to Saffron City. Last episode we finally took down the gym leader here and got our 6th badge in the Kanto region and now Dorito is leading the way to new adventures. Actually I don't know where we're going, Dorito stop! Stop dude! Oh, hey, sleeping, what? He was just asleep, he was sleepwalking, what? Never trust a three-headed bird. Anyway, today we are actually moving along with this game, so let's actually take a look at, well, not Darwin specifically, but we're going to take a little flight soon and see where we might be heading off to next as Darwin seems like it might start. What? I didn't read quick enough, but what I meant to say is sky dash our way over to the next city, which I believe is going to be all the way down here at Fuchsia. Uh, we have a couple of options as to where we want to go next. Um, of course, the seventh gym is on Cinnabar Island all the way over here, so we could also fly to Pallet Town and then go south from there. Uh, but there is actually one little area that I want to explore before any of that, and it is over here by the power plant. If you guys don't know, this is actually where you can get yourself a very rare Pokemon. Actually, a couple of rare Pokemon, because I just realized this is obviously where Zapdos is as well, and that is not who I'm talking about. Uh, so let's actually fly over to Lavender Town real quick, and we'll go check things out over there and see what we can catch. Did y'all just see the way Dorito jumped up into the air? Like, I always wondered how Dodrio flies. I guess it just jumps really freaking high and falls in style. Oh my, how have I not battled you before? Ah, the mountain air is delicious. Well, you keep on eating that mountain air. Boy, I'm gonna get me some real food. What I meant is that it's much easier to get to the power plant if we had actually flown to Pewter City or my bad, Cerulean. I don't know why I didn't do it from the beginning, so let's just do that now. And here we are at last. Oh my god! Did this really just- What? How did- What? Guys! A shiny hero just appeared out of nowhere, and I was just gonna say it's been a while since I caught any Pokemon. And look at the one that pops up. I didn't even know if I had any Pokeballs. Thankfully, we stocked up over 300 and even some Premier Balls. You know, I feel like the shiny Fero deserves a Premier Ball, but actually we should probably throw a Berry first just to make sure we get this guy because a shiny Fero just out of nowhere. Lucky Hawk, if anybody remembers that, has uh, graced us with his presence here. And oh my gosh, hopefully we can catch this uh, flying fellow here with the Premier Ball. We got two, a three. And oh no, please no. I gotta get it in the Premier Ball though. How sick would that be? Oh man, I, I don't want to risk it, but at the same time, I kind of do because, well, I mean, it was a random, like completely random odds encounter. Is that what you call it? Like I don't have any catch combo or anything going, so. Full odds, Shiny Piro. I think that's another term people use, but oh my, no, no, it actually happened. Am I really that rusty at the game? I don't even know how to catch Pokemon anymore. I should have just used the Ultra Ball. <gasps> the second shiny Pokemon to escape me in this playthrough. Oh, no. RIP to the shiny Weedle all the way back in episode two where I had to reset my save file and I never got to catch him either. Or I guess I did catch him but had to release him or just didn't save the game. The point is, that's two shiny Pokemon that I've missed out on in this game and I'm... I'm actually so upset right now. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Let's just move on to what I actually wanted to do here, uh, which is check out the little area of water down here. This will lead us to the power plant itself, uh, which you can see there's like a little item over there, but I don't actually want to take on the power plant just yet. We're going to save that for when I actually want to go and catch the legendary Zapdos. Uh, what I really want to do here is actually find a rare Pokemon that spawns in this area. There might actually be a couple of rare Pokemon, so I'm just gonna start catching a couple of tentacles, you know, get that catch combo up, and I mean, I guess just learn how to catch Pokemon again, because I am so upset. Like, I, I know you guys are probably even more mad right now that that just happened. Oh, geez, I don't even want to think about the comments right now, actually, because that was purely my bad right there for letting that dude go, but I really wanted him in the Premier Ball, too. I don't know. I felt like it'd be special, you know? We don't have that many of them, and I mean, it did shake three times. It was about to catch it. Uh, wow, I have a lot of items, actually. You should probably sell some of these. You could make a hefty profit, but there we go. We got lures and also max lures, I'm pretty sure, but um, 
I don't know if those affect the spawn rates. I think it's just how long the lure lasts. And as long as you stand still, uh, the lure can kind of last forever. So, oh, hey, magic cars are popping up now. What was that over there, though? I just saw a Pokemon over here. What? I can't even see it, and somehow I ran into it, but it was just kind of cool, so. <gasps> oh, whoa, there it is. Dratini popped up, and it was even more aggressive than the Tentacool, just running right into us. But look at that red ring right there. That means we definitely need some berries, and probably an Ultra Ball for this one. I am not risking it anymore after, uh, well, I said I wouldn't talk about it, so I won't. Let's just go for the Ultra Ball here, and... Uh, Okay, I thought the circle would be a little smaller than that there, but it's all good. We got two, three shakes. Oh, no. Please, not again. Uh, only three Ultra Balls left as well, and man, this Dratini is aggressive. I love this little dude already, and I'm so excited to actually catch this Pokemon. I've been wanting it, uh, well, not exactly for the team, but we'll talk about that later. First, we gotta actually catch it. Oh, gosh. I'm already out of Great Balls. I mean, Ultra Balls. Oh, no. I'm starting to sweat right now, guys. I just... Whew. Let's just hope for the best with the Great Ball. Might not be Ultra, but it is definitely great enough as we just got Dratini. And I think you can actually find the Evolution Dragonair here as well. Of course, uh, this little dude evolves into Dragon Knight eventually. The first Dragon Pokemon ever, I'm pretty sure. Uh, dragon and Flying type. But for now, it's just a little dragon, long thought to be a myth. This Pokemon's existence was only recently confirmed by a fisherman who caught one. And I mean, this is how rare Dratini actually is in this game. You can only find it uh, right outside of the power plant, like the area that we're in right now. So I guess some lucky fisherman was running around just like us. And instead of a shiny Fero, he ran into Dratini. And well, now we know that they're here. So wait, was that another one? <gasps> yeah, another one just popped up. Awesome. Now, that's pretty much all I wanted to do in this area, though. Uh, we're going to come back to the power plant later on, as I mentioned, but... Whoa, what the... Huh? <laughs> that was so weird. It's cool how uh, the background always changes, though, depending on what area you play with Eevee in. Like, we're literally in the water right now, so... It actually showed that, which is cool. Um, but next, I think we're actually going to head over to Pallet Town because although we could take Route 19 and then 20 to get to Seafoam, uh, I feel like Route 21... It's definitely quicker for at least getting to Cinnabar Island. And honestly, I want to get there as soon as we can so that we at least have the option to fly there um, and then back to Fuchsia so that we can head to the Seafoam Islands later on. So let's fly back to Pallet Town where it all began. And man, it's been a while since we've been here actually, but I always found it so cool how in the very first Pokemon games, you always see this area down here. And I mean, if this was your first Pokemon game ever, you'd probably be like, well, there's clearly a secret area down here, but you can't access it until so much later. And I just love that about it, actually, because I guess Pokemon has become a bit more linear nowadays, you could say. Um, you didn't really have the option, but it's just cool that you got to backtrack to an area. And I also always remember this area because it's the only place I believe we can find Tangela, which there was already one waiting for us there. So let's feed it a little berry and use this Great Ball, which actually matches its color scheme as well. I thought Tentacool matched pretty well with the Great Balls, but Tangela matches even better, being blue with them. Red suede shoes. Isn't it blue suede shoes? Or can red shoes be suede too? Tangela's got some nice shoes, that's all I'm saying. Anyway, we got the excellent capture, but not the excellent catch, come on. Like for real, look at this. Oh, what? Did, is it what I said, did, did I say something wrong? Man, these wild Pokemon just are not feeling it today, at least uh, not our Great Balls and stuff. So now we just kind of got to run around until another Tangela eventually pops up. Oh, we have the lure still going, actually, so that's rarer Pokemon are popping up so quick. But hey, it looks like we get another chance at Tangela at least. And this time around, I am not going to go easy on this uh, Tangled mess. I mean, there's not really too much we can do, honestly, aside from the Raspberry there and... Just start chucking away the balls, because we don't have anything better than Great Ball right now. Uh, but I think this Tangela is a little nicer than the last one. Oh, spoke too soon, again. Tangela, seriously, what are you? I remember doing a video so long ago saying that Tangela is literally just headphones in your pocket. Like, tell me I'm not the only one that whenever you pull your headphones out of your pocket, they end up looking as, you know, tangled as Tangela. Although I guess, uh... These new kids on the block are all about their AirPods nowadays, so you don't even gotta worry about tangling up, but jeez, what 
why is it so difficult to catch this dude? Like, come on, stop screaming at me. I'm getting stressed out over here. Oh, no. Are we all out of great balls? Are we actually... It's about to run away. Yep, I knew it. Jeez. I will be back, guys, because I think it's time to buy some great balls. And actually, before we move on to Cinnabar, we're back here in Pewter City because there's something really important that I realize I actually don't have yet. Um, as I was looking at the bag and selling items, there was the Helix Fossil in there, which of course we can resurrect over on Cinnabar. But there's another fossil Pokemon that's possibly even crazier than Master Helix himself. Um, and we can get him here in the Pewter Museum. Of course, we just used the cut there and we can get to this back office to learn the secrets of space, the mysteries of Earth. There's so many things about which we know so little, but that should spur us to study harder, not throw in the towel. That's true, I will always take the challenge, you know. We have two fossils of rare prehistoric Pokemon on exhibit. Oh, do you now? I only see one right now. What's up with it? Shh, listen, I need to share a secret with someone. I think that this chunk of amber contains Pokemon DNA. It would be a shattering scientific breakthrough if Pokemon could be resurrected from it. But my colleagues just ignore what I have to say, so I have a favor to ask. I want you to get this examined at a Pokemon lab somewhere. So this dude's basically trying to start Jurassic Park right now, and he's entrusted us with it for some reason, but, you know, I'll take it. We got the old amber now, which of course can be resurrected into... Oh, it's right there, Aerodactyl, wait. How do they know about Aerodactyl, but they don't know they can revive it from the old Amber? You can't sneak in the back way. Nice try, kid, but no. Oh, uh, whatever. You know what Amber is? Uh, yeah, we just got a free one. There's a lab somewhere trying to resurrect creatures from Amber, which contains the genetic material of ancient creatures. And we're gonna figure all of that stuff out as we head off to Cinnabar Island. Tangela, where are you at? Ugh! This time for real as we finally caught Tangela. Woof! I actually thought that one was going to run away too, but after the excellent capture, we finally did it, and Cinder gains a level up. You might notice I've also got Nagini in the party now, uh, the little Dratini that we just caught. I mean, it was just too cute not to give it a nickname, you know? It's not like officially on the team or anything, but it'll be gaining some levels for now. Uh, Tangela, though, is obscured by masses of thick blue vines. The vines are said to never stop growing until it becomes a Tangrowth, that is, and then you just gotta... So I, I don't know, you gotta do something about that thing. <laughs> Hedge trimmers gotta make a living too, you know? The landscaping and all that, just hit up your Tangela while you're at it. Would that be considered grooming or like actually harming the animal then? Because Tangela's vines, I'm assuming it would hurt if you clipped them or something. I don't know, man. Thinking about the biology of Pokemon is weird sometimes because they don't actually exist as much as I wish they did. But uh, looks like we got a big haul over here. I mean, Fisherman, uh, but he pulled in a big haul of hopefully not Magikarps. Fisherman Wade, what you got for us? Oh my, there's no way. He's actually got six Pokemon. Is this the real guy? The real six Magikarp Master Fisherman? Well, apparently Darwin was itching to get into battle, so let's take on this splash. Whoa, that was insane. But what I actually want to do is shake it up and Darwin's sure hit move. We're actually using it on a Magikarp. Probably the most overkill you've ever seen, but Eevee Volley. And got some uh, Filet Mignon tonight. I mean, Salmon on me. I don't actually know what Filet Mignon is. I thought it had to do with like a fancy fish, but I'm pretty sure it's actually beef or steak or whatever. This dude actually has five Magikarps though, so let's just get through this. Fish Filet's on me tonight, boys. Or I guess it's on this fisherman because it was his Magikarp. I feel bad now. That dude got roasted. And at long last, the final Magikarp. Just don't make the grade, do they? Nah, I, I give you a straight up F, my dude. This has been quite a tedious episode to get through so far. What with that dude having six Magikarps just now. And before then, Tangela ran us out of Pokeballs. And before then, we somehow couldn't catch the Shiny, which... Yes, I'm still upset about, by the way, but whoa, looks like there's actually a master trainer on this island. Hey, you! Going to Cinnabar Island by any chance? I'm bored. Is it okay if I coach you a bit? Yes. I mean, are you trying to catch a ride to Cinnabar? My surfboard's got plenty of room for two. Actually, it's already occupied by two, but I mean, it's got room for a third human person. I meant two humans, you know? I'm not good at this at all, but 
This lady has got a Machoke to start us off here, and I'm not really sure if Frank can handle it, but then again, we've never really used Poison Jab before, so let's just see how Frank is stacking up against the big bulky Machoke here. We got the Poison, so even though we did a little bit less than half damage there, uh, the Poison will definitely be able to finish it off for us. In two hits, I mean, because otherwise it would have probably taken three, but now this Poison Jab should do it no problem. And yeah, I actually didn't realize that Poison Jab had the chance to poison too, but I guess that's most poison moves. Um, the only thing that we might be able to get better here for Frank eventually is going to be Sludge Bomb, but at least for now, I'm definitely liking the Poison Jab. Uh, Jinx is coming out next though, and we already had plenty of experience dealing with Jinxes in the last episode, so just hit her with the crunch. Don't let yourself get tempted, boys. It's not worth it. Not with Jinx, at least. And, uh... Not even Frank is messing with that. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's how you know Jinx is not it. Uh, anyway, the last Pokemon is actually going to be a Kangaskhan. Definitely wasn't expecting that, but I don't know. I guess every code trainer sort of has a theme to their Pokemon, but I'm not really getting the theme of this one. So that's why I don't get Kangaskhan all of a sudden. Uh, the first one was Machoke. Then, how did I literally already forget the second one? Uh, Jinx and now Kangaskhan. What do those three Pokemon have in common? I'm not sure. Maybe they all had Dizzy Punch or something. Wait, that's probably it, actually, because now we're confused and gonna have to rely on the Lucky Duckies, but... Oh, the Crunch barely doesn't finish it off there. Do we actually want to risk it? Another Dizzy Punch would probably take us down, but even if I heal up, I'd still be confused and risk the 50-50, so might as well just swap to Cinder real quick and try to finish it off. Of course, Cinder could get confused as well, but hey, we didn't. That's good. I know we're faster though, so this flamethrower should seal the deal, and I'm sorry Kangaskhan, but uh, I don't know actually, I just feel bad because Kangaskhan's a mom, like, <laughs> she's taking care, or she's just trying to take care of her kid and we're out here just literally flaming it or setting it on fire. Anyway, finally we're going to be getting Hydro Pump on Dasani. I've been hyping this up for a pretty long time now, I would say, uh, that's the only reason that we actually haven't evolved into a Star U yet, or... Star me. Which one is it? Star me, star you. Ah, whatever. It's Dasani with the Hydro Pump. And that is it for Coach Trainer Pam. Always love that little expression at the end there, but you're pretty good. I'm gonna give you a little present. Hey, what? Ice Punch? How is it not Dizzy Punch? Maybe we didn't give it a chance to Ice Punch because, you know, it's like super effective against Dragon type and Grass type Pokemon. And like, we didn't have any of those types. So like, that's probably why she gave us Ice Punch, like, I'm guessing. Uh, the other Fisherman dude, though, I'm not gonna mess with because, well, I'm just not trying to deal with any more Magic cards right now, to be honest. Uh, but I did spray a Lure on accident, I guess. I'm not sure if there's even any rare Pokemon around the oceans here, but there's definitely a lot of trainers. A lot of trainers that I think I'm actually gonna save for the next episode, uh, trading up for the Cinnabar Island Gym. Because there's actually another Pokemon that I want to get over on Cinnabar Island. Kind of gave a little hint at it earlier on in the episode. Uh, but for now, there's a PP up on this island here. And I'm actually wondering if there's like hidden items on those little islands with like literally nothing on them. I guess it would only take us a little bit of... No! Oh, I thought that dude might not have the reach to see us. But Fisherman, dude, they got those goggles, you know, it's like... The zoom in function, they can see you from a mile away, or <laughs> maybe it's that pose right there. He's trying to dive straight into this battle, bro. And speaking of bro, he's actually got a slow bro here, so let's take that down. Not today, Jerome, not today. We got people to go, places to meet, and random little abandoned islands to look for hidden items on. Uh, Eevee's tail does not seem to be shaking though, but hey, there's a not so hidden item up there. Let's go for that. Where the heck is Cinnabar, by the way? I feel like I'm getting really confused right now with uh, Johto and when you're trying to go over to... Uh... Oh, a Waterstone. Hey, we can actually use that right now with uh, Starmie, but I think I'm going to save it for the next episode. Uh, what I was just thinking of was Mahogany Town, though. Is that where Chuck lives? You know, the fighting type gym leader of Johto. Pretty sure that's him, Mahogany Town. Uh, but Cinnabar is nowhere to be found, it seems. We just keep on going lower and lower and- Oh, wait, what? There's like a port now? Hold up, what? Here we are! 
Cinnabar Island, I spoke too soon, my friends. Over here, of course, the Pokemon Mansion, or is this the mansion? Scientists sometimes go into the Pokemon Mansion to carry out different experiments. Wait, wasn't the mansion over on this side before, though? This is the gym now, or am I getting mixed up? I'm gonna bring up the comparison photo right now, because I'm pretty sure these two used to be swapped, and I could be totally wrong. I'm usually wrong, though, so it's okay. The fiery town of Burning Desire, Cinnabar Island. And here we've got the gym, of course. The leader is Blaine, the hot-headed quiz master. I don't think you can actually take him on right off the bat. There's like a... Actually, the Pokemon Mansion side quest, I think. And Dorito's just sniffing the air right now. I thought we were sniffing these flowers. Wait. Oh. I thought we were about to get an item, too. Got my hopes up twice in a row there, for some reason. Ooh, a Magmar. Blaine is an odd one. He's lived on the island since before the Pokemon Lab was built. Ah, yes, the Pokemon Lab, the most important building on Cinnabar, the building that I've been trying to get to all episode, basically. And we've got a whole bunch more scientists. We study Pokemon here day in and day out. People even bring us rare Pokemon to examine. I know we've got a couple of rare fossils for them to check out. It's a photo of Dr. Fuji. What? Cinnabar Lab's founder, Fuji? Is Fuji the same dude as Lavender Town? It's gotta be, right? Did you come to have a look at our lab? Most impressive. I like to see you that kind of drive. Well, let's check out more of this mysterious lab because if this really is where Fuji used to work, what made him quit? I mean, I guess the experiments on Pokemon because now he's like all about helping the Pokemon, you know, right? Or is that not Mr. Fuji? It's gotta be. I think it's of a rare Pokemon. Wait, what is this guy talking about? Oh, another fossil. Well, we gotta go get our fossils checked out. It looks like this is not the room though, so pretty sure... There's nothing going on here. Yeah, this dude says it's just the guest room. And this guy just praises the sofa, so let's just get out of here. That's the chill room right there. We're looking for a bit more action. Hey, no running in the hallways. Boy, I've always wanted the chance to say something like that. Why? Why is that your one goal in life, just waiting there for a little kid to be running by just so you could say that? Or I guess anybody running, not just a kid, but we're a kid. This ain't Chuck E. Cheese, so I guess a kid can't be a kid here. But we can definitely get our fossils revived. I'm pretty sure this has got to be the room. We see all of the posters in the back, and is this the dude? No. Is this the dude? Hiya! I'm an important doctor. Yes, very well known indeed. Here I study rare Pokemon fossils. Hey, you have a fossil for me? Well, we got a couple of them, but I guess you can take this one because it's older first. It is a fossil of Aerodactyl, a Pokemon that is already extinct. Whatever shall we do? Resurrection? <gasps> this is why Dr. Fuji quit. He wants the Pokemon spirits to be at peace, to rest. That's why he lives by the Pokemon Tower now. It makes perfect sense. At least in my head, it might not be true at all, but... Yes, I want to get my Aerodactyl. So let's give him the old Amber and... That was a lot of sound effects there. Success! The fossil was an Aerodactyl as I thought. And just like that, we get Aerodactyl. We actually don't have to wait at all either. That's kind of weird. I know back in the old games, Fire Red, Leaf Green, you know, you had to exit the room, come back in, and somehow the fossil would be done. But now sound effects replace that, which is even better. A savage Pokemon that died out in ancient times. It was resurrected using DNA taken from Amber. I've never actually seen the word savage in Pokemon, but... I gotta say, that's that's pretty savage. It's going away. Well then, come back soon. And we got one last scientist. All matter is made up of tiny molecules. It's like a hundred is a collection of lots of one. Fun science fact of the day. Everything is made of molecules. I wonder if eventually we're gonna find what molecules are made up of. Isn't that what quantum actually studies? I've always been really interested in physics actually, but you know, it seems like something so difficult to get into that I mean, I just have a completely cur or different career path at this point that I probably wouldn't have ever become a physicist, but it definitely was kind of my favorite subject back in high school when I used to bust it to the dance. What is this dude going on about? Here, I'll give you this. Do you think you can forgive me? Oh, I wasn't even paying attention to half of that dude's story, so I guess I'll take the free TM. It forces your opponent to only use moves that cause damage. Yeah, we know that. Whoa, what is this? This is not allowed in a scientific research hall. That's, I mean, I guess they can do whatever they want. That's right, Eevee has the potential to evolve in a variety of different ways. Aw, our little Eevee doesn't want to evolve at all though. Yep, no interest. 
Oh, that's it. <laughs> Alright, well, this is the final scientist, so what have I done? I accidentally wrote on the board with permanent marker. Maybe I could turn it the other way and no one would ever know. <laughs> that sounds like something I would do, but trust me, someone will find out eventually, man. Like, I've accidentally broken some of my roommate stuff before. We're not going to get into the details of what, but let's just say you try to hide it. It's the truth will eventually come out. So just just tell the truth from the beginning. Save yourself some time and trouble. And oh, actually, there's an item hiding behind the lab. Really? Just an antidote. All right, well, that's good enough. Anyway, that is actually going to do it for this episode, but I wanted to end it off with actually getting Aerodactyl because I want to leave you guys with a question, and that is which of these Pokemon should join our team next? Of course, Nagini is already in the party right now. We got a level 44 Aerodactyl, so we really wouldn't have to do too much training for Aerodactyl to join the team, um, but... As you guys know, Dratini evolves into a Dragon Flying type, and I wouldn't really want to have two Flying types on the team. <coughs> Cinder. So who's it going to be? Dragonite or Aerodactyl? Let me know in the comments. I'm probably going to still level up Nagini because I do want to, you know, get a Dragonite, but I think you can actually find Dragonites in the wild somehow as well, like way later in the game. Either way, let me know which one you'd like to see down in the comments below, and I will catch you in the next episode as we explore more of Cinnabar Island and head inside the mysterious Pokemon Mansion. See you then! Yeah!